Okay, another video, this one's on the, well, just generally Baby Wally Drives, just to talk about the approach to those. Um, how do you start, well, I started first of all with designing these two wheels, thinking about the tracks and the wheels as the main kind of uh, build. And what I wanted to do, to be honest, was to create a, um, I'll just move this belt out of the way, I wanted to create a single print belt, um, so you can print it obviously on this side, or whichever side it is. Um, that would go on to um, onto a drive unit, not a fast drive unit, so I wasn't too bothered about speed. So what I decided to use was was a pair of tooth cogs to give us the thickness of the belt, which is in kind of in line with the character. Um, and then you have to go in and basically design this whole complex shape here, which has got, as you can see, angles to get round of overhangs, so there's no direct uh, 90 degree overhangs. There's some bridging which which work here um, but, but broadly what um, what you're looking at really is to create the same distance there so that little bit there which is um, 69 as the same distance between there which is around 67 so effectively if you look at them from the side the the profiles in the distance and the teeth are the same same size so that these teeth will actually uh, when when it starts to rotate the fix so you kind of think of it as a basically a kind of a, a, a big gear um, so in if you look at that that's the um, that little bit there in length is 10 uh, mil roughly and then the distance between those two is around 10 mil so effectively, what you what you try to do is get um, the the holes in the belt to work the work at the same space as one in the teeth, and then the teeth I've done them two angle points really because the first the first this, this more shallow angle grabs the belt and then it it sits on these two bits here as it goes in. So there's a bit a bit of kind of artwork if you like in designing these things. Um, but effectively there's two wheels now the other consideration once once i'd got this was a that the the distance between this wheel this pin and this pin for example had to match this 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 perfectly so there's quite a lot of um i don't think i've got any of the sketches left to sort of show you how we did that but effectively what was what it was all worked on what is this distance um what's this distance and so even that's a round distance when it flexes round. When it goes onto a straight, it becomes a straight distance. We know where the teeth are, and then the teeth have to be evenly spaced all the way through, and then picked up on this wheel with a similar kind of mechanism. And then I use two idles at top. The reason I use two teeth gears is I wanted to get them both um, a two-wheel drive effectively. Now this one's got 12 pins, and this one's got nine pins, which also means that if I wanted to make it a uh, an actual real two two-wheel drive then it becomes um you have to actually gear you have to create the gear ratios to match that so these are some of the design considerations you're thinking of um, so with this one i chose to use a um a single servo drive um which effectively then um drives this gear so that's the main drive gear and then this this is a um, I think that's 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a 10, 10 tooth gear. These two idle gears, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Two idle gears are 8. So effectively, they're both running at exactly the same speed. Now, when we get onto these gears here, I want these to run at different speeds because the 12 gear one has to run slower and the smaller 9 gear one has to run faster. Effectively, a 9 to 12 ratio easy way of doing that is to actually have the drive gears being a 12 pin drive gear and a 9 pin drive gear so what that means is it will drive these two now at the right perspective rates so even though they're different sizes this one will spin a little bit quicker so that when this belt feeds through it actually it's all in sync so that was the only consideration then i thought actually when you started to put these together i've put two holes um, so that they align correctly but actually there's a lot of alignment you need so you need to align exactly this with this middle pin here um, with the drive gear with the gear right the way through 
when you're first building it, you have to get alignment with the malls. So I thought, well, so how can I, you know, make alignment easy? So I thought, what I'll do is I'll just drill a hole right the way through. So there's this little hole here that does nothing other than give you a reference to make sure that all the parts that you're building on this particular drive rail are all aligned. So if if they're not all with this centre with that hole pointing up, you put one of the pieces on 180 degrees wrong or whatever. So um, I've used these little holes here just really so that and I put in the instructions and what you have to do is make sure that those holes are aligned. So as long as you've got those holes directly aligned, and they they brought the uh, pointing directly upwards and the the two holes when you put the screws in are flat um what you will have then is you'll have your entire your entire drive unit completely completely aligned so that was um effectively how i've done the drive unit as a consideration on that once i've created the drive unit and got the drive unit up and running and working the next thing i wanted to get was the idlers so the belt kind of goes round it goes over here uh, but then I wanted something that kept the tension um, So what I've done is I've used these now again these use a little three mil um, Or seven mil bearings three mil holes seven mil on the outside uh, Slotted in metal bearings just to give the uh, give them a bit of bearing space um, and They just bolt in the other consideration to do is because I'm printing on this side I can print 45 degree angles up. That's fine um, one of the challenges is when you want to I'll just see if I can show you on there. Um, when you want to print a, th a smaller hole inside of a top hole, so inside of a larger hole, so for a bearing insert, for example, to fit in there, because what would happen is if I'm printing from this side, is this is a 90 degree overhang, so it would fail. So what I do is on the side that I'm printing, I do a 0.4 millimeter thick wall which if I can grab a hold of it on here, I can probably show you the two edges. There we go. Yeah, so let's have a look. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, that's 0.4 millimetres. That allows me to get two layers in at 0.2 of bridging before I start to do that second hole, which gives it, gives it a bit of plastic then to do that. And then all you do is just push a screwdriver into there, twist it a couple of times, and it cuts that circular piece out. So again little consideration for when you're doing kind of overhangs uh, i do that on all, all the brackets and then the the next bit was this idler that i wanted to play with so i thought oh, actually i want i want an idler that's going to, that's going to take a bit of tension um but i don't want something that's too complicated and people got to go and buy springs and stuff like that so what i thought i'd do is i'd, I'd go for a 3d printed idler uh, a 3d printed tensioner which is this so I chose this shape because it's kind of got a bit of a V-shape here and a bit of a V-shape there, which means that in theory, if this is printed in flex, this can actually, the centre piece here can move in while the two outer pieces stay in place. So it gives a fairly solid bit of um, flex. And again, it's something that I might use, you could use on um, to, to give a bit of suspension or whatever. And then all you do really is bolt your little tensioners into there. So, yeah, some considerations for the for the drive. Once I've, once I've got the drive, I had to fit a servo in somewhere on here, which it is on this side. Create some mounts so that it'll actually fit in. Um, challenge with this with this particular servo was trying to get the mounting holes. So in the end, I, I got I used something that you could clip on either side of the servo, push it together, and then you bolted it in so that you didn't have to. Um, create anything to um, to use the servo screws so it kind of holds the servo in place through that with an outer uh, this outer drive panel it gives a bit more detail it just bolts on the outside so yeah a few considerations really on um, on on the Wally drive this one uses 25 kilo uh, 360 servos uh, which are really chunky they don't move massively fast but then again baby Wally hasn't got to move massively fast um, but, but what it what it does do is it gives us lots and lots of torque, and then once you built it, you leave the tensioners, you can leave the, uh, the the tension wheels off, put the put the put the wheel on, and then and then you screw the tension wheels into place, and that pretty much gives you your drive system. So that's a quick kind of fly through again, ten minute fly through on the considerations around uh, the design of the of the drive.